The Equitable Life Assurance Society presents This is Your FBI. This is Your FBI, the official broadcast from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Presented transcribed as a public service by the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community. From time to time, in their 30s and early 40s, most men and women ask themselves... What will I be doing when I'm 65 years old? What are my chances of being 100% self-supporting when it's time to stop work? Well, that's largely up to you and the decision you make right now. One such opportunity for an important decision will be offered to you in our middle commercial. It tells about the Equitable Society's Independent 60s plan. This plan means exactly what it says. Financial independence for you in your 60s. Do you like that idea? Then please listen carefully to this important message from the Equitable Society coming in about 14 minutes. Tonight, the subject of our FBI file, Espionage. It's titled, The Traitor. Guarding against enemy spies is one of the oldest problems of law enforcement. In chapter 2 of the book of Joshua in the Bible, we read, And Joshua sent out two men to spy secretly, saying, Go view the land, even Jericho. Today, no one knows the number of spies from totalitarian countries operating in our country. Certainly, they amount to many, many times more than two, particularly when you include even the native-born citizens who place allegiance to a foreign ideology above love of country. Today, espionage has been developed into a science, directed and conducted by experts. Combating this army of imported and domestic spies is one of the chief responsibilities of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Tonight's case from the official FBI files was selected because it is one of many in which a lead from an alert and patriotic private citizen proved to be of invaluable assistance to the men of your FBI. Tonight's FBI file opens on the deck of a small passenger ship in the Mediterranean. It is late at night as the passenger leans against the rail, idly watching the boat's wake. She lights a cigarette and flips the match overboard as the chief steward comes up behind her. Mr. Yelkin. Yes, steward. I hope you won't think I'm, well, butting in. I happened to be in the lounge a few minutes ago. I saw you. I was there when you got up from the table. You lost again tonight. Don't worry, I'm saving enough for tips. Oh, I wasn't thinking of that, sir. If, well, if you're running low on funds, I know where you can get them. Where? From friends of mine. You like to give their money away? No, sir, but when a person has something they want, they pay well for it. I don't understand. Mr. Yudkin, I... Well, I couldn't help overhearing you talk to some of the other passengers. You were saying something about how well you knew every port in the Near East. Yeah? You over here quite a bit, don't you? Is what you said true? Of course. Could you draw defense maps of those ports? Are what your friends buy? Yes. I'm signing off the ship at Genoa. If you drew some, I could make the arrangements for you there. Think about it, Mr. Yadkin. Steward? Uh, yes, Mr. Yatkin. I played again tonight. I saw you at the table, sir. I'm ready to discuss your proposition. Well, that's fine, sir. Well, tell me a little more about it, huh? There isn't much to tell. You have certain information. I give it to them. My friends pay you. It's that simple. You say they pay well? Yes, sir. How well? Um, that depends on the assignment. Oh. Uh, pardon me, sir. Huh? Uh, yes, that's me. Uh, Mr. Yadkin's wanted in the lounge, sir. Oh, thank you. I'll be right there. Where he goes, sir. 
Now, we get to Genoa tomorrow, don't we? Uh, tomorrow morning. If you had the map finished by then, I could take you to meet one of my friends. All right. I'll have it ready. <laughs> you know this cafe? I've never been in the city before. Oh. Where's your friend? Uh, there he is, uh, Mr. White. All right, see you, Joseph. Oh, good to see you again, Mr. White. Uh, I'd like you to meet my friend, Mr. Yadkin. How do you do? Mr. Wine. Sit down, sit down. <coughs> little wine? Uh, thank you. Oh, <laughs> uh, you know, they write songs about April in Paris. But to be here in summer and with good friends, that my young man is living. I drink to that. Ah, uh, Mr. Yadkin, I hear you'd like to join our little family. I want to sell a few maps. You have one with you? Yeah, right here. This is Haifa. A dotted line is a gate that closes the channel. A line of circles is the underwater pipeline. Those X's are the oil refineries. Mm hmm. These are docks. Those are secret gun installations. The map is right. It's valuable. That's right. Well, how much do you want for it? What's it worth? Well, let's say $200. It's yours. Mr. Yadkin can draw maps of every port in the Near East. We'll pay the same for the others. When? As soon as you deliver them. My boat leaves in an hour. Oh, no, no, no. I didn't mean today. You draw them on the way back to the States. When you're finished, deliver them to a woman in New York. I'll give you her name and address. How she know what to pay me? I'll be home before you are. More wine, gentlemen? Ten days later, at an FBI field office in the United States, Special Agent Jim Taylor is writing a report when a man approaches his desk. Mr. Taylor? Yes, that's right. Uh, my name is Peter Stutzman. Oh, the agent in charge called and said you were on your way here. Oh, have a chair, please. Oh, thank you. He said you were a seaman on the SS Fidelity. Yes, sir. And one night on our last voyage, I heard our chief steward ask a passenger to sell his friend some maps. Oh, of where? Near East Ports. The steward's name was Joseph Pembina. And the uh, passenger's name? Uh, Alex Yadkin. Alex Yadkin. Yes, sir. He agreed to draw a map and go to Genoa with Mr. Pembina and meet a friend. I don't know the friend's name. But they said something about the cause. Oh? Uh, Mr. Yadkin was traveling with an American passport. You say he got off the ship at Genoa. Yes, sir, they both did. Uh, Pembina signed off there, but Mr. Yadkin returned and made the trip back here with us. Uh -huh. He stayed in his cabin all the way across, making more maps. Here, I have copies. Well, how did you get them? Well, he drew them on a pad. I went into his cabin and took the page under the one he used. Mm -hmm. uh, you can see the lines he drew here. See, they came right through. Yeah. Did you see him when he left the ship here? Yes, sir. After he got through customs. He gave his trunk check to the man from the Hotel Star. That's all I know. Well, thank you very much. It's all right. I hope it helps. Well, we'll start checking the maps and Mr. Yadkin right away. Can I help you, sir? Yeah, yeah please. Birds, tropical fish. I'm not looking for a pet. Well, that's all we have. I wanted to see Mrs. Desha. I'm Mrs. Desha. I'm Alex Yedkin. Well, the man from the boat got a report on you. A report? Information about you, who you are, where you're from, the usual thing. You have those maps? Yeah, yeah, here. Thank you. Well, I'd like to be paid. How many are there? Three. Six hundred dollars. Where are you staying? Hotel Star. Yeah, as soon as the maps are gone over, I'll call you. Well, that might take a while. A week or so. Well, couldn't you call Mr. White and ask him to speed it up a little? No, there are three steps between us. I never contact him directly. I'll get your money as soon as I can. Hey, tell me, is there a report on everybody? Yes. I'd like one of Mr. White. He's a man who'd give any friend the shirt off his back and get into a business deal with the same friend and drive a bargain so hard the shirt would be returned with interest. 
Mm-hmm. That's good to know. Well, don't let it bother you. Why not? You'll be dealing with me, and I'm easy. I just get the shirt back. No interest. Can I see a minute? Sure, Jim. What's on your mind? A woman named Anna Desha. Oh, you've run into the ladybird, too. Yeah, the card in the file says you've got the folder on it. Right here. They'd like to take a look. Yeah, but I can't. I'm due out on a surveillance in uh, 20 minutes, so how about a quick fill-in, huh? Nothing definite, but everything points the wrong way. No? She has no visible support besides her pet shop, and after watching her for months, I can tell you one thing. What's that? She's buying her food from the profits. She's eating less than the birds. Mm -hmm. Any leads on where she does get her money? None. All her deposits are in cash. They're big and fairly regular. Mm -hmm. How does she rank? We think she's only a couple of rungs down from the top man. And who's he? Oh, we don't know. That's why Mrs. Desch has never been questioned. We're hoping she'll take us to him. Oh, uh, I see. How'd you get tangled up with her? You remember those maps I showed you last week? Uh-huh. Well, we've had a watch on Yadkin. He's been to see her twice. He kept any other interesting company? No, except for those trips, he hasn't left the hotel. Well, you can be sure of this. He wasn't sent from Europe to study the hotel star wallpaper. Yeah. Well, thanks, George. I'd better get moving now and go back to being Mr. Yadkin's faithful companion. Mrs. Desher? Sorry about being late. Oh, that's all right. Now, the pay is good for these maps, but the hours are awful. Well, you can stop making them. Huh? Before I'm going out of business? No, I've got another assignment for you. If you want it. Do I get paid? Of course. When does it start? The minute you get to Havana. Where? Havana, Cuba. You'll meet a friend down there. Who? Joseph Pambina. What's he doing in Havana? He's getting information. His name there is Villas. When do you leave Europe? Right after you. Here. Yeah. Enough there to cover everything. Book your passage and call me. So I know what ship you're on. When will I see you again? Not till you return. Uh, what's the assignment? I'll cable you on the ship. Give you all the details. Our man had lunch with Mrs. Desha today. Oh? Yeah, and from there he hightailed to a travel agency, got himself a cabin on the SS Heritage for Havana. When's he leaving? Tonight, and that's part of the problem. I can't follow him. Why not? Well, the boat's full. I told the SAC about it. He's calling Washington now. Mrs. Desha withdrew $2,000 in cash this morning from her bank. Oh? Well, that's what must have been in that envelope she gave him. He paid cash for his ticket? Yeah, yeah. George, you suppose the head man is in Havana? Oh, I doubt it. This is the first Cuban angle we've run into. Well, let's get it. Oh, I'll get it. Okay. Agent Wells. Oh, just a minute. The SAC for you, Jim. Thanks. Taylor. Yes, Mr. Carroll. You have? Uh-huh. Yes, sir. All right. Yes, sir. I'm sure I can. Thanks very much. George, the captain of the Heritage, is a friend of the Bureau, and he's making room for us. Us? Yeah. SAC's putting us both on it, so we've got 45 minutes to go home, pack, and make that boat. return in just a minute to tonight's exciting case from the official file of your FBI. But now, listen. It's the first of the month, Evelyn. I guess that's the postman with our check from the Equitable Society. Every month, right on the dot, those equitable checks come to members who have paid up their Equitable Independent 60s plan. They're checks that mean financial independence for life after you're 65 years old. And here's Mr. Edward Fontana, who started one of those plans in 1927. You finished your payments last year, didn't you, Mr. Fontana? That's right, Mr. Keating. My son took over my law practice, and I'm taking life easy. In other words, Mr. Fontana, you're now enjoying the three freedoms that go with an independent 60s plan. First, 
Freedom from money worries and job worries. Financial independence. <laughs> Just bought my grandson a new bike, Mr. Keating. It's nice to know that I'll always be able to do things like that. Second, with an equitable independent 60s plan, you're free to live anywhere you please. My wife and I decided to keep on living right here in Philadelphia. All our friends are here. Third, freedom to do the things you've always wanted to do. Down on Chesapeake Bay, I've got a little old boat that sleeps too. And last fall, we took a cruise down to Florida. I guess I ought to thank my equitable man for that. Twenty-four years ago, he proved to me that the independent 60s plan is not just for people who make a lot of money. That's a fact. You don't have to earn big money to begin an equitable independent 60s plan. Ask your equitable representative to explain why you probably have a big head start towards independent 60s because of your social security and the life insurance you already own. Often, only a small amount of additional insurance is all that's required. A few dollars a week did it for me. Friends, why not profit by Mr. Fontana's experience? Phone your Equitable Society representative without delay. Or send a postcard care of this station to the Equitable Society. That's E-Q-U-I-T-A-B-L-E. The Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. And now back to the FBI file, The Traitor. In tonight's case from the files of your FBI, you are meeting two different species of subversive agents. One is the bought and paid for type. His sole interest in spying is the money it puts in his pocket. The other kind is represented by Mr. White. He takes his misguided satisfaction from doing a job for a cause he places above his own nation. Both types will always be with us. It is part of your job as a decent citizen to see that they do not succeed in their work. You can help tremendously by keeping your eyes and ears open at all times. If you run into anything that seems as if it might be espionage or subversive activity, report it. This is important. Do not, we repeat, do not investigate it yourself. Just pick up your phone book and get the number of your nearest FBI field office from page one. Then call your FBI and let them do the rest. Tonight's file continues aboard the SS Heritage en route to Havana. Special Agent Taylor is on deck when the captain approaches. Taylor, here's a cable for you. Oh, oh thank you, Captain. I got a copy of one Mr. Yadkin just received. Came in about the same time as yours. Oh? Here you are. Thanks very much. Captain, they said you were looking for me. Oh, it's all right, Mr. Wells. I had a cable for Mr. Taylor, but uh, I found him. I'll see you both at dinner. Thanks again, Captain. Right. George, we got word from the office to meet somebody from Cuban intelligence named Gonzalez. Captain also gave me this copy of the cable Yadkin guy. Uh-huh. Brother, I hope Gonzalez has a code expert down there. I never saw one like this before. Let's go down to the cabin and try to crack it ourselves. Senor Gonzalez? Yes, si, senor. Taylor, FBI. Oh, it's nice to meet you. Thank you. I heard that you were coming down with uh, Senor Wells. Well, Agent Wells is out now following Yadkin. Oh, I see. I'm pretty sure that he's meeting somebody this morning. Oh, who? Well, that I don't know. Uh, tell me, do you have a code expert? Oh, si, senor. Very good one. Fine. If he can break this, it'll help a lot. It's a copy of a cable that Yadkin received on the boat. I see. Uh, have you checked into a hotel yet? Yes, the one on the corner, but that's all we did. I haven't even washed or changed my shirt yet. <laughs> well, you go do that, senor. Uh, by the time you come back, we may have this code broken and find out what your suspect is doing here. Hey, mister! Mister! 
A lottery ticket. How much? American dollar for a whole one. Let's have a couple. Gracias. Gracias. I hope you win. Still gambling us. Huh? Joseph. How are you? Fine, thanks. Come on. Let's find a bench. Yeah, you have to do all the talking. I still don't know why I'm here. The American Atlantic fleet is on maneuver south of the island. Oh? And the fishing boat manned by friends of ours has been with him. It is due back this morning. Pick me up? No. They will have a list of the ships in the fleet. What for? I never ask reasons. I was told to get this list. Your job is to take it back to the States. How Mrs. Desha get it out of the States? Well, up there, when you mail a letter, even the police can't open it. She'll send it to a drop in South America. From there, it goes in a diplomatic pouch. That ship you came on sails this afternoon. You have your return space? No. You better go get it. What about the list? I should have it by then. Wait in your room. I'll deliver it to you as soon as I can. Senor Gonzalez, have you broken that code yet? Oh, more than that has happened. Uh, two men were brought in a few minutes ago, and one of them had this list in his pocket. Huh? That would be worth sending Yatkin down for, huh? I should say so. Were the men bringing it to him? Well, they must have been. It was in an envelope with the name Joseph Villas across the front. Uh, the cable to the boat said Yatkin was to meet Villas at the public square by the entrance to the music festival. Oh. Uh, Senor Wells called in and reported that they met and talked for a few minutes. Who is this Villas? Well, he is new on the island. He come from Portugal a few weeks ago. Uh, somebody who knew him in Europe said his real name is Pembina. Joseph Pembina. He See? recruited Yatkin. Hey, Senor Wells told me they seem to be old friends. These, uh, these two men you arrested, uh, they know you've got this list? Oh, no, Senor, no. It was taken from them when they were searched at the jail. Uh, this list was then thrown into the property box. Oh. They probably think it's still there. Uh, why, Senor? Well, if you were to release them and let them take this without any questions, they'll deliver it to Vilas. But if we do the... Excuse me, Senor. Certainly. Hello. Uh, see, Senor Wells. Uh, he's right here now. For you, Senor. Oh, thank you. Yeah, George. He did for when? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I'm working on something right now. Yeah, yeah, bye. Yadkin bought a return ticket on the Heritage. That leaves this afternoon? Which means we've got to work fast. Well, let's change these figures enough so the list won't do them any good. All right. Then release those prisoners. This might have to go through the head man back in the States, and that's who we want. That afternoon, Alex Yadkin caught the boat back to the United States. On the same ship were FBI agents Taylor and Wells. Upon their arrival in this country, Yadkin was kept under further surveillance. A few days later at the FBI field office. George, the SAC just got a report from Washington on that ring. What's the word? Immigration's finished their investigation on Yadkin, Mrs. Desha, and the rest. And? And Yadkin's clean. He got his citizenship through regular channels, but Mrs. Desha's in trouble. Three others are illegal aliens. <laughs> I thought she was a citizen. Oh, she's got the right set of papers, but she got them through fraud. Oh. Immigration's holding off till we're through with her. How about the rest? Well, the SAC said he didn't care either way about them, so they'll be picked up any minute. Well, everything's gelling at the same time. No, what else is there? I just got some news on the head man. We intercepted something mentioning a Mr. W and indicating he decided things. Uh, that's a start. Yes, but the clock's running for them. Pardon me, Jim. Sure. Wells. Yes, Freddy. He has? Uh, uh, right away. Jim, that was a report on Yadkin. He's left the hotel and he's heading uptown. This is Desha. Why don't you answer your phone? I've been busy. Is that list there, Lord Bring? You know, hold on to it. Huh? Don't you want it? I don't know what to do with it. Why not? My contacts with Mr. White were arrested. When? This afternoon. All of them? Yes. You deliver it yourself. Can't. I've got a way here. Look, I was promised a bonus for this. Mr. White's the only one who can okay the extra money. Look, if you don't take it to him, I will. Go ahead. Well, where is he? Hotel Caldwell. Phone him. Tell him I'm coming. Come.
Coming. Hello, Mr. Wayne. Remember me? Well, of course, Alex. Come in, come in. It's been a long time. Here's your list. Yeah, fine. I'll just put it in this envelope. Well, don't you want to see it? No, that's not necessary. The envelope's addressed and stamped. Mail it on the way out. Mr. White, before I go, I'd like that bonus. My boy, I'm surprised at you. Why? Money is energy. The cause needs every ounce of strength it can get. Yeah, is that a long way of saying I don't get paid? No, no, of course not. You'll receive something. But part of your salary must be the joy of knowing that you're helping shape the new world. That's worth something, isn't it? No. Alex, I'm disappointed in you. You're the only member of my family taking this attitude. I still like to be paid. All right. There you are. One hundred, two, three, four, five. Thank you. Now, please mail that letter. Just a minute, Yudkin. Uh? Do I have some other callers? Yes, Mr. White. We're special agents of the FBI. You're both under arrest. All members of the spy ring described in tonight's case were arrested, tried in federal court, and convicted. Because Alex Yadkin and Mrs. Desha were not Native Americans, it is important to point out here that they are the great exceptions to the rule, so far as America's foreign-born population is concerned. For of that group, the overwhelming majority is loyal to this country. It is also to be pointed out that this case shows the thoroughness with which your FBI protects the security of the nation. Like everyone else, the men of the Federal Bureau of Investigation hope and pray there will never be a World War III. But if it comes, your FBI stands ready. Now... Two final questions on the cost of the Equitable Society's Independent 60s plan. Mr. Keating, does this plan take into account what I'll get from Social Security? It certainly does. That's one big reason why the cost of an Independent 60s plan is so moderate. But can I start now with an inexpensive plan and expand it later if my salary goes up? Many Equitable members do exactly that. After all, the amount of your Independent 60s plan is strictly up to you. Your Equitable man takes into account both your present income and your future needs. Get the exact figure from your Equitable Society representative or send a postcard care of this station to the Equitable Life Assurance Society. Next week, we will dramatize another case from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Its subject, Jewel Theft. Its title... The Fraudulent Healer. The incidents used in tonight's Equitable Life Assurance Society's broadcast are adapted from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. However, all names used are fictitious, and any similarity thereof to the names of places or persons, living or dead, is accidental. Tonight, the music was composed and conducted by Frederick Steiner. The author was Jerry D. Lewis. Your narrator was William Woodson, and Special Agent Taylor was played by Stacey Harris. Others in the cast were Anthony Barrett, Ted DeCorsia, Kenneth White, Lamont Johnson, Victor Rodman, Paul Theodore, and Peggy Weber. This is Your FBI is a Jerry Devine production. This is Larry Keating speaking for the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community, and inviting you to tune in again next week at this same time when the Equitable Life Assurance Society will bring you another thrilling transcribed story from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. The fraudulent healer on This Is Your FBI. Stay tuned for the adventures of Ozzie and Harriet. There's fun for the whole family when Ozzie and Harriet come your way next. This program came to you from Hollywood.